all of you in London a very good day and a warm welcome to the Plymo factory at Newton Acliffe, just a few miles out of Darlington. When I were in a very spacious, clean, modern industrial environment, but like any factory in the full blast of production, it is a bit noisy for television purposes, that is, which is why I'm using two microphones. But we are here to announce that for the second year running, Plymo has won the Queen's Award, this time for technology, and to illustrate why that award is particularly appropriate, a fitting reward for a company which claims to have broken new ground in technological innovation, manufacturing, and in monitoring the quality of its products. Now, of course, it would be foolish to ignore the fact that Plymo has been very much in the news lately in an entirely different context. But this program is not about that. Instead, it aims to show that Plymo employs technology which is simply years ahead of its competitors within its own industry. And on this live program, the company aims to prove just that. Now, I am at the factory where, of course, the world-famous Plymo lawnmowers are made, as well as other products for Plymo's parent company, Electrolux. And here we can see one of the reasons why the company has won this top award for technology. And the answer is, quite simply, robotics. Robots here are programmed to assemble and package a complete lawnmower. And during the program, we'll be finding out why this new computer technology is of benefit to Plymo's customers, the gardening public. Plymo is, of course, famous for its air cushioned or hover mowers. Indeed, I believe they invented the name. But they also make rotary lawn mowers, all in a range of sizes from small domestic machines to the really large specialist job for the professional ground. Now, the lawnmower business is, of course, highly competitive. And in spite of any claims to the contrary, Plymo has stayed in the lead by supplying stylish, high-quality machines at prices which the customer can afford. Some years ago, the company decided to make its engineering and research and development programs their top priority. And with me to talk about that is Mr. Bill Palmer, who is the manufacturing director. Mr. Palmer, what were your initial engineering priorities in the program? Our initial priorities were to uh, assemble our existing range of lawnmowers in the most efficient and automated fashion possible, but also retaining the flexibility so that the, as new products were developed and introduced, we could reprogram that same equipment to produce those. And why precisely, in, in your view, have you been honoured with this Queen's Award for Technology? Because for the first time, we are now able to build a complete product, test that product and package it using robotics. You say for the first time you are able to do it, but it goes further than that. I think this is the first time in the world that this has been achieved. Uh, other companies have manufactured components or sub-assemblies using robotics, but now for the first time here we have a complete product assembled in this way. Well, that, that's a remarkable technological achievement by any standards in the world. So tell us about the robots themselves. Well, robots play an absolutely vital part in the, pro in the process of manufacturing at Plymo. Outside the car industry, we're the largest user of robots in the UK. We started using them on the injection moulding machines for unloading components. And from this, we led on to the manufacture of handles so these can be made and plastic coated entirely automatically, untouched by human hand, and now our latest achievement is the robot rig, the robot cell you see, you've seen this morning, where we completely assemble products, test and package. And how is that very complex process actually made to work? 
Well, the process starts at the injection moulding machine, where we mould the hood, or the major component of our lawnmower. Here, a robot unloads the injection moulding machine and loads to a direct feed line into the robot cell. I must say, looking at them on the screen, they don't look like the traditional image of robots. No, these are industrial robots designed uh, uh, for the application and operating in, within factory environments, not the hot sci-fi type. But I interrupted you, go on. From the injection molding machine, as I say, direct feeding to the, in, uh, to the assembly operation. Here, the two robots working together assemble all the components to produce the power unit. Then, as part of this process, the power unit is electrically tested so that its quality is guaranteed before it is passed to the second part, where the assembly complete of the mower takes place. Again, electrical testing is undertaken automatically, computer controlled, so that the quality is guaranteed before it leaves. And thereafter, after we put the handles and the literature into the carton, the robot picks up the completed carton, stacks it on the pallet, and it even changes a full pallet for an empty when it's completed a pallet. Well, I say again, that is a truly amazing technological achievement. And I make no apology for repeating that Thank fact. You. And I know, although you're a modest chap, you're very proud of it, and rightly so, because you were effectively the engineer in charge who set it all up from the beginning. What were the problems which you encountered? Because in developing a system like that, there must have been horrendous difficulties. Well, the first problem was that we had no one else's lead or experience to lean on. We had to start from scratch. Simply because no one else had done it. Right. So we, we started by taking our experience with robots in other parts of the factory and then buying uh, uh, basic, the basic robot module parts and the basic computers and then engineering the operation that we've seen this morning. And how would you summarize the ways in which the very expensive and very complex introduction of all this technology is of benefit to the customer? Well, for the customer, this has lowered the manufacturing cost. So with a reduced manufacturing cost, we can be more competitive in the marketplace. We can also operate round the clock so that the response to certain demands we can more easily satisfy. And that way, the customer, when he wants a product, is much more likely to actually find a product available for him to purchase. And what has been the reaction of your workforce to this high level of automation? Because that's what it is. Well, we've had tremendous support. Everyone at the, in the Flymo team recognizes that if we can improve our productivity, then we can be more and more competitive. And have you actually uh, laid people off because of the in introduction of the automation? No, no. What we, this has enabled us to do is, by being more competitive, the volume, the quantity has increased, and so we've, be, we've been able to employ more people into the feeder areas. So that this is the end result. And the people on the factory floor really appreciate it. Very much, because this enables some of the dull, repetitive nature of jobs to be removed. And they can concentrate, everyone can concentrate then on the things that really matter. And, and this way, with consistency and accuracy, we can ensure that the quality of our product is to the highest order so that our market position can be maintained at on a quality-based product. Thank you very much, Mr. Farmer, and congratulations again, not only on the Queen's Award, but also on a remarkable achievement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we've uh, seen something of the technology, and of course, robots assembling lawnmowers might improve the efficiency of the company, and indeed the quality of the work, simply by eliminating the factor of human frailty. Whether or not the machines themselves may be intelligent, is of course debatable but the consumer most certainly is intelligent and it, when it comes to buying a lawnmower the gardener takes his selection of a mower from all the machines available on the market 
very seriously indeed. So what does all this technology mean actually to the customer? Let's take a look at Plymo's latest hover mower. It's not yet fully made by a robot, but it has been given its own kind of revolutionary technology built into the design. Whether you prefer picking up the grass clippings or leaving them to mulch and feed the lawn is largely a matter of which expert you happen to believe at the time. The advice on this is certainly varied, if not confusing. But Flymo have recognized that gardeners like a choice. Contrary to certain television commercials, which you may have noticed recently, Flymo have produced machines which collect grass and others which do not. And these mowers have been in their catalogue for many, many years. But even Rolls-Royce bring out new models, although not very often. And this year, Flymo produced a grass-collecting hover mower with a revolutionary method of vacuuming up the grass clipping. It works by taking in air from the base of the grass box, which creates suction, and that suction picks up the grass clipping. Inside the machine, the air passes through a screen and goes on to provide the traditional flotation. The machine, incidentally, is also very light, easy to use, and very quiet. Well, now I'm going to be joined by Mr. David Bowles, the sales and marketing director of Flymo. Mr. Bowles, um, why does your company regard the XE38, that's the, the model, indeed, a as being so new and different and exciting? Well, firstly, because we believe it to be a world beater. We have worldwide patents on this machine that, that will last us well into the next century and give us a lot of advantages in exploiting not only a market in this country, but in export markets too, where uh, our future really lies, uh, and which is vital, of course, to the country too. But secondly, because it utilizes all of the traditional benefits of, use, of, of cutting grass the Flymo way, if you like, on a cushion of air, it's light, it's quick, it's easy, it's very convenient, and at the same time, it's using this revolutionary method of actually vacuuming up the grass clippings that it leaves and leaving a beautifully clean finish with, as it were, the same energy. Indeed. If, if you see what I mean. Is that uh, the linchpin of your argument for it, its efficiency? Yes, it is, because um, our research and development people and our engineers here at Acliffe have really done a wonderful job in using very simple technology, really, in a very advanced and sophisticated way to produce a machine that utilizes the air that we use to float, a light, float the machine off the ground and uses that air to actually suck the vacuum cleanings out of the uh, grass clippings up in the same way that your ordinary domestic vacuum cleaner might. There have been a lot of claims and counterclaims recently about who is the market leader <laughs> and, and who's doing best and all that. Uh, would you care to comment or would that be impertinent? <laughs> no, it's not impertinent. I'd be very happy to comment. I, I'd say without any fear or contradiction whatsoever that we at Flymo are the market leaders here in the UK independent market research last year, which we just had presented for the full year 82, confirmed that with our market share at around 35% of the total UK market, which is an achievement that we're particularly pleased to have got. Um, for the first time ever, we have leadership in our own market. Um, so far as the counterclaims are concerned, well, the way you cut your grass is a matter of personal preference in the end. But you know, more and more people actually have a piece of grass which is a sort of a recreation area. It's a football pitch, it's a cricket pitch, it's a place where the dogs create havoc. And, you know, all they really want to do is to maintain that very quickly, very efficiently, and never mind the cosmetics so much. Yeah. And that's where we've won our ascendancy in this market, by providing that opportunity and that the machines, the lawnmowers, that people can actually do that with. But, but you would argue, would you not, that you also produce a machine for the real cosmetic lawn on which one might play croquet. Indeed we do, for very obvious reasons. There are people who, who uh, and quite rightly so, who, who are very keen gardeners and like to have a beautifully finished lawn. And, and more powder on the rubber and long when they stay around, because that's what Britain has become famous for in some ways. But, that's right. But they become very expensive, those sorts of machines. But yes, we do. In our total range of around 50 products, we actually offer some cylinder machines for that purpose. 
Well, we are just about totally surrounded by the products, but, but the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Yes. Tell me about these two, for well, example. This is our smallest machine, the Flymo E Minimo, which is a 25 centimeter cut, 10 inches for, for me, because I'm not into these metric things so, so much now. But this sells in the high street for around 39 pounds and uh, it sells in very large volumes indeed because it's so easy it's so convenient it's just right for the small domestic lawn and and feather light oh indeed yes and so easy to operate simply flick the switch and away it goes and that's how easy i thought you were going to cut the microphone cable for a moment what about this bigger one well the bigger one this is the flymo gle which is a 38 centimeter cut 15 inches which is incidentally the most popular width of cut in europe which is also why we've designed the xc38 at that width of cut as well um, selling for around £79, um, it does a very, very good job for a lawn of about, I don't know, about a half a tennis court to a tennis court in size, um, very quickly, very conveniently. And um, again, efficiently. Oh, indeed, indeed. Can I um, uh, take you back to uh, your competitors? Uh, because uh, it has been the focus of a good deal of uh, attention yes. in the press and elsewhere uh, lately. Would you care to comment on certain claims being made by them or not? Yes, I think I would like to comment on those. We firstly think that the reason for their very strong knocking advertising campaign, which we found quite objectionable, has been out of desperation to try and halt a declining market share, um, which has been declining by leaps and bounds in the last three or four years, principally because uh, they use outdated technology to cut the grass. And to assemble the machine, too. Yeah, and sure, yes they do, in, in very old factories. But, you see, with a cylinder mower, which has got this cylinder revolving round on, onto a blade which is actually cutting the grass, you've only got to hit a small stone, or a manhole cover, or something that exists in everybody's lawn today. The thing's out of adjustment, out of alignment, it's got to go back to a specialist for a repair. The result of that is a bill of perhaps £30. Now, if I'm a customer that's paid, say, £55 for that mower, I'm going to be very cross indeed inside the first six months. And that, I think, is something that they recognise, haven't, of course, admitted, but it, it's prompted them to, in desperation, try to retard the inevitable growth of new technology, new machines, and new ways of cutting grass. But what about the um, impact of this slanging match, for want of a better word, on your own chaps here, and your ladies, too? Yes, we have a lot of ladies here, thankfully. Well, it's been quite extraordinary. The morale in this factory is very, very high indeed. What it's done is, in fact, it's created a great deal of antipathy towards our competitors. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong in a sort of a battlefield situation with having a, having a bit of hate going for the enemy. And uh, that's what's happening now for us. They're, they're writing to their MPs. They're putting together petitions. Um, uh, they really are backing us up in, in, in our sales effort to counteract the problems that the television cam this advertising campaign is creating. But, you know, I actually believe that they've got it wrong because I actually believe that the British public is not ready for this sort of advertising. It's not allowed... But this knocking advertising. Yes, yes. It's not allowed anywhere else in Europe. This is the only country where it can occur, and I think the sooner it's stopped, the better. Despite the fact that, to date, you seem to be doing rather well, I believe. Oh, indeed we do. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying that says, when you're, when you're in a corner, never knock your competitor. And uh, that's a fact. When you start knocking your competitor, then you really have got problems. And in fact, they're mentioning us more and more in their own PR releases, their own advertising campaigns. It's all good stuff. So, uh, to summarise everything you've said, and what a heartening message, I may say, would you say that this second Queen's Award typifies as a good augury of good times ahead slammer? Oh, indeed it does. This Queen's Award, of which we're very, very proud, I must say, um, is going to give us a very, very great advantage, we think, uh, in the future. Do you know, the greatest salesman we have is this factory that we're in now. The, the best way to nail down the big order is to invite our customer up to our factory, bring him in here, show him the way we produce machines, and I promise you, over lunch they sign them every time. And, and that's what it's about. Our engineers and our research and development engineers are really the best in the country, and they're producing our sales force and our marketing team with a sort of backup that's absolutely vital in a, in a modern technological world where even the minutest advantage gives you a great advantage when it comes to selling. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again, not only on the award, but also everything else you've achieved. Thank you very much indeed.
Well, that's our brief look at the background to the news of Flymo's latest Queen's War. The company believes what we have touched on today proves why it is the market leader in Britain and one of the largest manufacturers of lawnmowers anywhere in the world. Flymo believes this comes, as we have heard, from its massive investment in research and development, its pioneering use of new electronic and engineering technology, and its consistent search for new machines within the price bracket of the ordinary god. And no matter what other manufacturers claim, and no matter how they choose to do it, the facts about the Climo operation here and the machines themselves should convince the public, as indeed they have already done. From the Flymo factory at Newton Acuff and from our live outside broadcast team here, this is Raymond Baxter returning you to London and to Peter Bullock. Good day.